Oregon's 2024 class is absolutely insane. I don't know how in the world Dan Lanning is doing this on the West Coast and, and the curing and stockpiling all this talent. But I found my 10 favorite players in the Oregon 2024 class. And we getting started with number 10, which is Mr. Kamar Mothudi. Mothudi, 6'2", 230, linebacker. When I watched the tape, a uh, great athlete, uh, Lightning quick, physically imposing, great blitzer in the run game, great spire in the run game. I do think he's going to need a little bit of time to develop. He may sit for a year or two, but I do believe he is a star caliber athlete. Roger Selpega. Selpega. Tight end. I think he's more of a, a, a converted wide receiver to tight end at 6'4", 220. I'm pretty sure he played basketball. If you look at his tape, if you watch this tape, you see a lot of traits of he plays. He he does a lot of shooting in the, shooting in the gym. Uh, so 6'4", high jumper, high point, a lot of one-handed catch, a lot of uh, jump ball situations, and I think he he could be a really great tight end. He could, and it could trim him down to like two, you know, two ten, two fifteen. You know, really make him solidify him as a, a number one receiver. But they could bulk him up, two thirty, two forty. Being that Brock Bowers mode, everybody looking for the next Brock Bowers at the, at the college level. Uh, he could be that. He could be. So, with that being said, I think Roger is a star tier player. He coming in at number nine on my list. Gatlin Bear, receiver, 6'1", 194. Tons of yak yardage, uh, speed, high point, electric, returner. Five star on some boards and some of these main recruiting, but he's a five star. Uh, and I agree with I think he has that star potential. He, he probably will get a shot at the NFL uh, if he keeps doing what he's doing. I have him as a star tier, so he came in at number eight for me for this Oregon 2024 class. Coming in at number seven, we got Trent Ferguson. And this is one of the more intriguing picks for me because at six, seven, 300 pounds. He does just about everything you want an offensive lineman to do to get movement and production in the running game and in the passing game. So I like him more as a run blocker. Uh, he does a good job with his hands, hand placement, elbows always down, always got that triangle, thumbs up, strong inside hand, great base, great, great foot speed, great good foot pace. Uh, I, I think he's going to be, he could potentially be, because originally, I'm going to be honest, Trent Ferguson was my fifth player. He was in the superstar tier. Uh, but, you know, I had to put some parameters on myself. I didn't want to just have everybody be in the X Factor. I had to really challenge myself to pick a top 10 and to put them, uh, I allocate them in the appropriate spaces that I thought, you know, based on their film. So, Trent Ferguson, Trent Ferguson came in as a, originally as a superstar. But well, as I looked at it, I said, if I had to remove some, if I had to cut this down to three people, who would it be? He just barely missed out on that superstar tier. Uh, but he he could, he could easily be like at six, seven, 300 pounds. He he could easily be one of your best offensive linemen in the, in the next two years. Cause the boy just, he just looked that good. We got Ryan Pelham, uh, six, five, 11, 170, small dude, not the biggest, great speed, great pacing. I think he's going to be a, he, he can contribute early in the return game for 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 Oregon. Uh, I think when I and I wrote in my notes, I said it's disrespectful how slow he makes fast people look. <laughs> like he 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 doesn't even look like he's running full speed all the time. So I don't even know we really got a true gauge of how fast this kid really is. Um, Cause he he just he looks to me he was like a a cross between. My one of my favorite receivers, regardless of what he does off the field, most of the best receivers in the league had some issues going on off the field. Antonio Brown, he's a cross between Antonio Brown, Tavon Austin, and Deshaun Jackson. That's what I kind of saw. And this is more of a gut feeling for me. I know most people are going to pick or going to take uh, Gatlin Bear, and, and it's fair. I think Gatlin Bear could easily be a, a superstar player. He was a superstar player for me originally, but I had to knock two people down. And I said, he and Gatlin Bear and Trent Ferguson. Unfortunately, they missed out. They missed out on that opportunity. You know, they missed out. If I had to keep three people, I took I took Pelham over, over uh, 
Gatlin Bear, and I know it's gonna. I know that's controversial, but I don't care. It's my board. It's my board. Get your own board if you want your own board. Uh, so yeah, Pelham came in at number six. One of my absolute favorite players in the entire class. I've been wanting to do a video on this kid for the longest. I just haven't had the time to do it with my work schedule, covering different uh, sports topic interviewing kids and stuff like that helping them promote themselves haven't had time to do it but we're going to shout him out today and that guy is the name is the guy of Braden platt i like Braden platt to me he is one of the the best two-way enforcers in this class when you watch his tape both as a running back and a linebacker you say man i can use him at either one i could play him at either one I personally, me personally, this is just Coach Lee. If I was the head coach of a team, he playing linebacker for me. Have, I love having running back traits at linebacker. I, I love that. Like I, I, I want all that. I want all your your running back skills at linebacker. So and and how what I what I wrote, I said this kid is a missile, meaning he's fast and explosive, and he gonna blow something up when he get there. Listen, he gonna blow something up when he get there. So and that's on at running back. And that linebacker. At running back, he'll run over you. At linebacker, he'll run through you. At running back, he can run past you. And that linebacker, you ain't running past him. So to me, he was a two-way enforcer, very twitchy athlete. And I think he's clearly earned the distinction of being the number fifth player on my board. And or a top five player on my board. And uh did I forget somebody? I'm not good. I think he's earned the right of being the number five player on my board 10 9 8 7 6 5 the fifth player on my board next up a bit controversial people ain't gonna like it but it is what it is i got elijah rushing coming in at number four six six 251 pounds edge rusher to me when i watch the tape uh scheme versatile uh even fronts odd fronts. and when i say even fronts it means four down linemen odd fronts three down linemen uh, he can either he can you can either bulk him up to play that 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 defensive end spot that four out that tight five, or you can you know kick him out a little bit, keep him at two fifty, maybe lean him down a little bit, and then bulk him back up some as he as he matriculates through the system. Let him play that stand up outside linebacker position. He had thrive. Only one knock that I had against his versatility was I didn't see him rush a lot from both sides of the field. He really just stayed in that left end spot, that four eye, that tight five, that head up technique. He just stayed in those three techniques pretty much from, for the most part. But that's a small thing, but we, we all know those high end top level pass rushers have to be able to rush from both sides. Cause I may want to put you to the boundary. I may want you to cut off the field side to keep them from spilling and keeping them from getting outside. So being able to move around the front inside outside is is critical um but i think he can do it just i don't think he was asked to do it as much at high in the high school level because i think this his team was pretty good like when you watch his highlight tape he was in the backfield and the rest of his teammates was in the backfield so it could be a, a knock on his level of competition but if you just watch him his long arms and he has a, a really good first step he's clearly he, he can clearly be a superstar for for oregon now we're getting into the the, the interesting part this next kid is interesting because depending on what website you look, whether it's Rivals, 24-7, Huddle, Twitter, well, no, nah, not Twitter. If you look at, depending on where you look, his size is going to vary greatly. On Huddle, he's 6'5", 310. On 24-7 Sports, he's 6'2 and a half, 366. And I honestly don't care. I don't care what size he is, whether he's 6'3", 266 or 65310. I want them. <laughs> and I want them bad. I want them on my board. And that's the guy of Jericho Johnson. Uh when I look at his film, he's a uh, elite, elite, elite level knockback strength. I mean, like he'll take an offense lineman and push him seven yards in the backfield and make the play. With the running, he had tackled the offensive lineman and the quarterback and the running back at the same time. Extreme, if he is if he is legitimately 366, there is a lot of beef. If he's legitimately 366, 6'3", 366, his motor is absolutely insane. And his, his motor is high, and his he has a crazy, crazy 
first step and get off. Like those are like the number one traits for defensive line edge rusher. Can you get off that rock? Can you give me an amazing get off? Can you press the pocket? Can you get up the field? So, and he does that. And if he's legitimate 366, 370, moving like this, we talking about the next uh, Don Terrio Poe. And Don Terrio Poe got a lot of criticisms coming out of, out of college because people say his tape was vanilla and all that good stuff, but that boy was plugging up those gaps. He would, he would press the pocket when he needed to. He was stuffed to run early in his career. So I think he, he could even probably be better than Don Terrio Poe at the college level, especially with the next couple guys I'm about to put on the board. But Aaron Flowers, safety, six foot, 200, 202 pounds. Uh, when I watched the tape, uh, silk, like, I mean, silky smooth pedal from the safety spot, great in transition when breaking on the football to break it up or pick it off. He picks the ball off a lot. He, and I I did label him as a, a ball hawking, Strong safety, free safety. He 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 he's in that Ed Reed and Troy Palomalu range. Well, and to me, his to me his real comp, his real comp to me, as as I kept watching this film was Minka Fitzpatrick. And you know, I like every, when I was watching it, I like, bro, he has great hips, he has great transition, he's great great back pedal. He he production is there as far as ints and pass breakups and tackles and the production is there. And when I watched it, he has a similar frame to Minka, a similar playing style to Minka, and that's what I comped him to. So he reminded me of Minka, so he, he's coming in at number two. And as a Steelers fan, you know we love Minka Fitzpatrick over here. Uh, so, and my last guy, my favorite guy in this entire Oregon 2024 class, done a couple videos on him. I did two videos on him. 6'5", 290, defense alignment. Great not back, great pass rusher, scary quick for his size. To me, this kid is in the is on the Aaron, not the Aaron, but on the Chris Jones spectrum of potential. He could be, he could easily be the next Chris Jones, both in size and how he plays the game. He could easily be the next Chris Jones. Easily. So this is my top 10. We got Aiden Breeland, Aaron Flowers, Jericho Johnson, Elijah Russian, Braden Platt, Pelham. Trent Fur, I really, I really like Trent Fur. I really like Gatlin, Roger, and Kamar. Like that's my top ten. Can y'all imagine? Whew, in two years, probably in, in the eight year, you gonna you gonna have Aiden Breeland at the four eye or the three, however you want to do it. Aiden Breeland at the four eye. Aaron Flowers at your strong safety. Jericho running the nose. Elijah Russian either bulked up to two eighty to play defense, that other defensive end spot, or they can kick him outside, let him play that outside line. But then you got Braden Platt coming in for one of those two middle linebacker spots. Pelham going to be a great slot receiver, returner probably like two years. He may, he may have to sit a season, maybe, depending on what they want to do. But Pelham is a great fit for what Oregon does on offense because they, they, do, they like to do a lot of that, you know, kick the ball, you know, Quick dots, slants, hitches, drags, RPOs, get the go to the numbers. If I got a cluster of receivers out here to the right and there's only two people out there, we just gonna throw it out there and let our athletes make plays. And Pelham is an athlete that can make plays. Uh Trent Ferguson, in two years, he may be your best offensive lineman. And he may hear his name called in the NFL in the third, fourth year. So Gatlin, Gatlin, Gatlin is your true number one receiver in this class. I'm not gonna do any comments. We all gonna, we gonna comment to the, everybody gonna comment to Thielen and blah blah blah. And, uh, you know whatever. I ain't gonna. That's, that's not fair to him. I'm not gonna do that. I will do a little bit of research and I will find some better comps for him. But I don't have any today. Um, but Gatlin is going to be a great true number one receiver for you. And Pelham can work the slot. Then you got Roger, the tight end slash receiver who probably gonna play tight end. Uh, that can you know eat up the, the eat up those linebackers and safeties because he's fast enough to get by you, big enough to out jump you, strong hands, one-handed catch. And then we got this middle linebacker. Y'all set <laughs> defensively. Y'all set. I think the one and they, they they picked up one quarterback this year. He gonna have to sit for a year. And I and I like the kid, but he you know that that quarterback room is crazy. They got Matt Moore, Dylan Gabriel. These kids. They got Gatlin coming in. You got. 
Pelham coming in. You got some. It's a couple other receivers down here that can really play too. Um, but yeah, I think I think Oregon is going to be in a very nice spot. <laughs> I think y'all in a very nice situation. And I think y'all will be happy with this 2024 class. I have no idea how Dan Lanning was able to pull this off. And as a Georgia fan, I hate it because all 10 of these players, I would love him to be for, at Georgia. As a Deion Sanders supporter, I would love for him to come get some of these. I, as I made a video saying that he need to come get <laughs> Aiden Breeland and Elijah Russian. Because he... Hey, bro, I, don't, I, don't, I like your offensive line you brought in, but I don't know if they can. I don't know if they can dance with these dudes. I'm gonna be honest with you. So, but y'all, let me know what y'all think in the comments below. I'm out.